The Secure Web Gateway is an increasingly important security capability because it sits right now at the intersection of four major macro trends in IT. The first big trend is mobile. We've got tablets, we've got mobile phones, we've got laptops, and all these devices are not fixed to any particular network, so network security becomes a little less efficient. The other big issue is bring your own device trends. We see a lot of organizations allowing employees to bring their own devices to work, and they can use those devices when they're doing work business, and most of the connection there is, is on the Internet. The next major problem is that we see the Internet being the nexus of malware. So all modern malware uses the Internet as a infection mechanism or as a method to update their infections or as a way to exfiltrate the data that they steal. So the Internet, the Secure Web Gateway, that focal point allows organizations to inspect traffic for malicious content, both on the upload and download. So we're also looking for signs of infection on clients and we're also looking for content that may be escaping the organization either through malicious means or just through users dropping things into Dropbox or webmail and things like that. The other trend around malware is that we see that the Internet is becoming a much more rich interaction experience. So the social media, social web is a great example of that. Traditional webmail and chat has always been there. And we expect to see even more rich media environment and a rich transaction environment with HTML5. We already see that with things like Flash today. And as we see that dynamic changes and more application capabilities, more DLL, more browser capabilities, then that brings new vulnerabilities that can be exploited by malware authors. And the final trend that we see is cloud applications. Organizations are increasingly migrating applications from their glass house, from their data center, out to the cloud and adopting cloud-based applications like Salesforce.com and Box.net and others. And as they do that, they lose some visibility into those applications. They're no longer sitting in front of those applications with their IPS devices and their firewalls and their secure web gateways. And in fact, if you combine that with the mobile trend, then you also find that not only are the applications no longer on corporate networks, neither are the users and they're not even, in some cases, using our devices, so we're completely out of the transaction path. So secure web gateways, I think, represent this great opportunity to reapply a lot of policy and security and control back to what is becoming a very critical sort of communications medium, the Internet. Malware threats on the Internet continue to multiply and become increasingly more sophisticated the other thing that we're seeing is an increasing amount of very skilled attackers that are building attack code, and then they lease this attack code to less sophisticated attackers. Some of these organizations are very sophisticated, and all of it's occurring on the web. So they're using botnets, they're using cross-site scripting attacks, they're using compromised websites, they're using all sorts of vulnerabilities within capable browsers, they're using Facebook redirects, whatever they can to convince people to go to malicious servers. And then from there, they download various types of malware depending on what the client is like. So these are very sophisticated attacks. There's multiple attacks. There are multiple actors. All of them are targeting organizations and unsuspecting visitors. The other major thing that we're seeing is an increase in targeted attacks. What that means is that organizations are increasingly under attack simply for intellectual property, the problem with targeted attacks is they're typically much more well-crafted attacks. They go under the radar quite quickly. The second type of threat that organizations need to be worried about is legal liability. So organizations now have multiple mobile devices in employees' hands. Those users can go to any number of websites with those devices. So setting up an acceptable workplace and allowing them, keeping them from going to pornography sites and gambling and crime sites while they're on corporate time and corporate devices is a major problem if those devices aren't being redirected through some kind of secure web gateway. The other big problem for organizations is legal liability from the perspective of users mishandling intellectual property or sensitive data. So, for example, they upload somebody's healthcare information, either maliciously or on purpose or by accident or just because they're trying to get their job done. Most organizations have responded to the changing Internet threats with the collection of security technologies that they've had for a long time. So that is firewall, 
intrusion prevention devices, and then endpoint security. And those three devices, while they're perfectly adequate for doing what they do well, they really haven't adapted to the new realities of the Internet. A couple of challenges with them. Number one, firewalls. Firewalls are really designed actually to, by policy, let certain things in and not other things. But once they've decided to let a particular technology in or a protocol in, then they're kind of blind to what's in that payload. So HTML, HTTP, HTTPS, port 80, port 443, those are typically open. After that, the firewall really doesn't have a whole lot of control. Some of the next generation firewalls are starting to have a limited amount of capability to inspect that traffic and make application aware decisions, but they're relatively rudimentary compared to a good secure web gateway. Intrusion prevention devices are relatively good at detecting network intrusions and anomalous network events, but they're not terribly good at detecting application level events that are above layer seven in the OSI stack. So they're not really effective at doing this. And the other problem with both firewalls and IPS is that they are on network. When we mentioned before, a lot of these devices are now mobile. They may or may not go through the uh, the LAN WAN boundary, and so they may not go through these devices. On the endpoint side, endpoint protection is an absolutely necessary technology, but the reality is that traditional AV protection is having a hard time keeping up with the quantity of threats and the quality of threats, they're significantly less effective at catching unknown threats, even if it's a new variant of an old family. So polymorphism to change the threat means it can generally get by an antivirus solution. So endpoint protection is increasingly being bypassed. So a new approach is needed to A, to deal with the changing internet and the application level functionality in the internet and the application level malware in the internet, and finally to protect all devices, regardless of where they are, whether they're on net or off net. The critical requirements for a secure web gateway break into really three or four buckets. The number one major bucket that we look at is security. It's a secure web gateway after all. There are a number of advanced technologies that organizations or, or vendors can use in providing advanced security for secure web gateways, and they must go beyond sort of antivirus and static lists or known lists of bad websites. The other thing is security should be bi-directional. So we should be looking at security on the inbound, making sure that no threats get to the endpoint, but we should also be looking at outbound security capabilities to see if there's signs that the endpoint is already infected. Is it already communicating with bot and command and control? And if it is, block that traffic and let us know what's going on there. The second major bucket that we look at is sort of application control and website categorization. So controlling what users can do on the internet, where they can go and applying that type of policy. So this is like allowing people to go to Facebook but not post or not allow them to go to pornographic or, or malicious websites and then allowing them to granularly control applications. So the ability to sort of control where they can go and, and what they can do on the internet is critical. A couple of the advanced capabilities there, as we talked about, are the ability to control not only web-based applications like Facebook, but also some internet-based applications like, say, Skype or Yahoo IM. Another critical capability for the URL side is the ability to dynamically assign a categorization to sites and assign multiple categorizations to single websites. So, for example, Facebook is social networking. It could also be pornographic social networking site. It could also be a malicious social networking site. So it may have layers of complexity there. So single dimension categorization is not really enough. The final bucket really is around reporting and visibility into all this traffic. Web traffic is very verbose. There's lots of lines of logs. So the ability to scale out for a very large organization, that could be significant amounts of data. So the ability to really quickly drill into that data and find a particular nugget or to collate that data so we get a, a valid report in real time or near real time is critical. One of the biggest complaints we have from our big customers is that it's very hard to get reports. We have to start a report and go to lunch. The other problem that we have today with reporting is that some of the reporting is very static in nature. It's not really analytic. And what a lot of organizations would like now is the ability to drill down on specific questions. An example would be, how many users went to Facebook this month, or how many users use Dropbox, or what's the volume of executable attachments that are uploaded to Dropbox? So reporting is really becoming a lot more dynamic and ad hoc than it was in the past. One thing to consider is that 
The secure web gateway, is, we coined the term a few years ago, and the reality is that we probably should have called it the secure internet gateway. And the reason is because a lot of the protocols are now not just web-based. So we want to make sure that they can cover all sorts of protocols. And as we see these new devices like iOS and Androids come online, these are devices that really don't have a native firewall capability. And so although they have a web functionality, we also envision some of the secure web gateway vendors taking over with a cloud-based internet sort of firewall capability. So if I was to do this again, I would probably call it the secure internet gateway. One critical capability would also be that we want to be able to apply policy across security, app control, and reporting across all devices and all networks. So we want to be able to apply this policy in one place and have it applied regardless of whether it's a, an iOS device, an Android device, or a full-blown PC. There are two options for applying a secure web gateway. One would be to deploy infrastructure on your LAN-LAN boundary or to use a cloud-based service. The traditional approach, of course, has been to apply appliances on the LAN-LAN boundary and is about 90% of the market up until recently. Now we're starting to see a shift towards cloud-based services that provide that functionality much faster and in some cases cheaper and better. So in the email security market, is well on the way, cloud-based email security is about 41% of the market in 2011, and we're projecting it to grow to about 55% of the market by 2016. The website, significantly newer, but uh, secure web gateway functionality delivered by SaaS is right now about 15% of the market. We're projecting it to grow to about 25% by uh, 2016. It's growing faster than the market for infrastructure. So why is a secure web gateway as a service growing faster than the infrastructure solution? I would say that the primary reason is that organizations are looking for a solution that can cover all of their endpoints regardless of where they are. And so cloud-based security fits that well. It also fits the model of cloud, all the things that we like about other cloud-based services. They're highly available. They're usually significantly more scalable. You only have to pay for what you use. You don't have to buy excess capacity for a growing organization. You don't have any care and feeding of the actual appliance, no rack space, no heat, cooling, power. So the cost of ownership is quite a bit lower. Also, you don't have to maintain the actual appliance, so you're not doing version upgrades every couple of years and upgrading the actual appliance every three to four years. In some cases, organizations can also get a significant bandwidth savings if it allows them to change their architecture from a hub and spoke. So we see a lot of organizations looking at this as an opportunity to go to a, a more meshed environment using cheaper direct-to-internet bandwidth and only backhauling the traffic that needs to go to headquarters via point-to-point -point or IPsec VPNs. The other advantage of cloud-based security is that it's uh, easy to deploy and it provides for very good reporting capability. As I mentioned, for a large organization that has multiple gateways spread out over the globe, consolidating all the logs and then actually drilling into that information and getting a real-time report is very difficult. It's hard to scale that reporting. Cloud-based solutions can provide very good global reporting and they take care of all the care and feeding of that database. And then finally, the really big advantage to me is that cloud-based security solutions have the capability of being a, even a better security solution. Because they're inline in all the traffic, they can often spot trends earlier than infrastructure-based solutions. The other advantage is that they can push out updates to their cloud much faster than they could if they had to push out those updates to all of their global appliances on every different platform after doing all their QA and getting their customers to actually implement those version changes can be a big time lag and where the cloud-based service features and security functionality can be pushed out fairly quickly. The three main objections I typically get from customers when we talk about the cloud-based solutions is, number one, they're worried about the privacy of their log data in the cloud provider's environment. Number two, they don't feel like they'll get the, all the features they need that they have with their current on-prem solution. And number three, they don't feel like they have any requirement to go to the cloud, to go to cloud-based solutions. So if I look at those in turn, I would say, number one, a good cloud-based solution will either encrypt the log data at rest in their environment or they'll obscure it in somehow so that your log data is not easily accessible. 
So I think that takes care of it. A lot of organizations, though, even on their prem, they don't go through any specific extra requirements to keep their log data private. The second area with features, I would agree that early days cloud-based security solutions maybe didn't have as many of the features that, of on-prem solutions, but I would think they've come a long way now. And I actually see some of the cloud-based providers, because they can offer features at a more enhanced rate, are now surpassing some of the infrastructure that's available with on-prem or the features that are available on-prem. And then number three, the requirement, I mean, the real specific requirement that I would have is that mobile devices, small offices, home offices, a lot of these things are running naked now, and there's no security applied to them. There's no policy applied to them. I think that there is a requirement to move to a cloud-based solution or to, to use VPNs or other things to force them back through. But I think it is important for these mobile devices to get routed back and this secure web gateway technology applied to those devices. And if it's hard to do that with uh, pushing out appliances, then a cloud makes the most sense to do that. So the bottom line is organizations need to recognize that the internet is changing. It's becoming the nexus of mobile, of BYOD, of the social web, of malware, of cloud-based applications. And organizations are going to need to have to control this critical medium in the future. The thing they have to recognize is that malware is becoming a lot more sophisticated, a lot more prolific, and a lot more targeted. And our existing technology, firewalls, IPS, endpoint security, is really not solving those problems. And we need a more application-aware capability, and that's what secure web gateways deliver, as well as they deliver the ability to sort of manage where people can go and what they can do on the Internet. But they need to be able to do that across all of the devices that we see. So whether on LAN or you're traveling, whether it's a tablet or a PC, or whether it's a branch office or a home office, you need to be able to cover all of these different devices. Cloud-based security is one of the ways that you can do that. You can implement them fairly quickly. They adapt fairly rapidly. And cloud-based technologies are becoming quite a bit more mature. So we see that as being a really good way of solving a lot of these problems and solving them relatively rapidly at a good total cost of ownership. So that's the bottom line.